I call your attention to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah, the 58th chapter. Isaiah, the 58th chapter, and we're going to read verses 1 through 12. There's Isaiah, the 58th chapter, verses 1 through 12, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version. And we will find these words. Cry aloud, spare not. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Tell my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily. They delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching God. Why have we fasted, they say, you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? In fact, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure and exploit all of your laborers. Indeed, you fast for strife and debate and to strike with the fist of wickedness. You will not fast as you do this day to make your voice heard on high. Is it a fast that I have chosen? Is it to bow down his head like a bulrush? and to spread out sackcloth and ashes? Would you call this a fast, an acceptable day to the Lord? Is this not the fast that I have chosen, to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to spare your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh? Then your light shall break forth like the morning. Your healing shall spring forth speedily and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your real God. Then you shall call and the Lord will answer. You shall cry and he will say, here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger and speaking wickedness, if you extend your soul to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then your light shall dawn in the darkness, and your darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your soul in drought and strengthen your bones. You shall be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those from among you shall build the old waste places and you shall rise up the foundations of many generations and you shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to dwell in i would like to use as a subject this morning the repairer of the breach the repairer of the breach. The world is racing for a vaccine for the coronavirus. And this pandemic has turned the world upside down, inside out. There's a lot of pain this pandemic has caused. And scientists and politicians are trying to fix the problem, but the problem is much deeper than what meets the eye. 
at the core of our national and international problem is spiritual wickedness. And this wickedness not only caused this pandemic in our time, but wickedness also caused a pandemic in the time of Noah. The Bible says, then the Lord saw the wickedness of man, that it was great in the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. So the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, creeping things, birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. You see, wickedness was the core problem then, and it is the core problem today. Unless we call it what it is, we will never become the repairers of the breach. What is a breach? A breach is a break, a gap, an opening, a rupture, or split in a wall, in a barrier, or defense. It is a weak spot in the levee that gives way to the flood, or a way in where the enemy comes in to kill, steal, and destroy. The breach in this nation has not been repaired because the foundation and the structures of which this nation was built had cracks, holes, weak spots that caused the foundation to be weak, flimsy, and unstable. The foundation and the structure had openings of white supremacy, cracks of racism, gaps of injustice, holes of inequality, walls of discrimination, ruptures of exploitation, and weak spots of religious justification. The American church, supposed to be the conscience of the nation, the repairer of the breach, but the American church, by and large, has been the guarantor of the unjust social, economic, and political structures of our nation. Far too long, the American church has compromised with evil and injustice and have been complicit in its operations. Had the American church, and I'm mainly talking about the white church, had they been the repairer of the breach, we would have a different America than what we have today. The American church has allowed racism and oppression to go on for four centuries without interruptions. And people of color are eating the bitter fruits it produced. I agree with J uh, Jamar Tisby. He said that the time for American churches' complicity in racism has long passed. It is time to cancel compromise. It is time to practice courageous Christianity. If the American church, the white and black, if we are going to be the repairs of the breach, we must come back to God and obey his word and pursue the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things would be added to us. If this pandemic doesn't do anything else, it ought to bring us to our knees. It ought to cause us to confess and repent of our transgressions and motivate us to turn from our wicked ways. When the cup of God's endurance is filled and people's hearts remain like stones and justice continues to be trampled in the dust and unjust killings continues without righteous indignation and the poor continues to be neglected 
and the weak continues to be run over by the strong and sin continues to be woven within our cultural norm and compassion has dried up in our dealings with one another and the silence of the church remains self-evident, God releases his pharmaceutical kingdom on the world where plague and pestilence are turned loose on the world. When the church won't stand up, when the church won't speak up and work to repair the breach, then God speaks. And when God speaks, the whole world is in trouble. God speaks, he speaks with fire. He speaks with thunder. He speaks with floods. He speaks with hurricanes. He speaks with earthquakes, with plagues and pestilence to show his displeasure with mankind. The postmodern American church has allowed a breach to happen within the body of Christ and it has slowly become a complete rupture. We are divided down racial, theological, and denominational lines when there is only one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Many Christians have cast aside the word of God and have replaced it with secular humanism, psychoanalysis, and other non-kingdom of God principles. You see, we are in a crisis today because we have not been the repairer of the breach. We desire religion without relationship. We want rituals without righteousness. We want judges without justice. We want to be good Americans without being obedient disciples. We cannot charm God by fasting and going through the motions of religious expressions and emotional gymnastics to show our devotion when it's really an effort to promote ourselves. There are people who fast, there are people who pray, but still have that same old evil, same old tricks, same old attitudes, the same old backwardness that they used to have. There are Christians who have lynched others and go into the church and thank God they're good Christians. And to add insult to injury, many Christian preachers, white and black, are too afraid to speak out against wrong, evil, and injustice. They are too afraid to be the leaders of repairing the breach. Isaiah described them as blind watchmen. They are all ignorant. They are all dumb dogs. They cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. Yes, they are greedy dogs, which never have enough. They are shepherds who cannot understand. They all look to their own way, everyone for their own gain, for his or her territory. You see, the pastors and preachers who do balk at injustice, those who do bite at racism and oppression, are thought of as angry black men, rebel risers, race baiters, disturbers of the peace, so forth and so on. But I cannot help but agree with Frederick Douglass, who said, American Christianity is that it practiced too much religion and very little humanity. Let me repeat that again. Frederick Douglass said, American Christianity practices too much religion but very little humanity. God sent Isaiah to speak to the people during a time when life was messed up just like it is today. The nation had drifted into apostasy. The leaders turned their heads at wrongdoings. They rewarded each other for doing nothing. Uh, they favored the rich. They taxed the poor. They mistreated the oppressed, didn't welcome the strangers, and sought their own interests and not the interests of the people. Their religion was a sham. They prostituted the truth of God 
on the altar of materialism. They went through religious rituals but could not hear from God. They fasted but still could not hear from God. They couldn't hear from God because they refused to let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like a mighty stream. No amount of religion or religious expression can substitute, can substitute for justice and righteousness. And until justice and righteousness are the orders of the day, fasting and praying won't move God to hear nor act on our petitions. They offered God a fast to get what they wanted and not what God wanted. It was a quick pro quo proposition, a situation in which they can give something in order to receive something. They said, why have we fasted and you have not seen? Why have we afflicted our souls and you take no notice? They were going through religious motions, but the problem was they had no relationship with God. Their hearts were not fixed on God, but on their own self-serving needs. God responded through Isaiah saying, in the day of your fast, you find pleasure. You exploit your laborers, you fast for strife and debate and strike with the fist of wickedness. You fast, your fast hasn't done anything for your heart. Your heart is still wicked. Your heart is still unjust. Your heart is still unrighteous. Your heart is still oppressive. Your heart is still insensitive. Your heart is still racist. Your heart is still ungodly. You see, this is not the kind of fast God required. This is not the kind of fast that God would accept. God goes on to say through the prophet, is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and that you bring to your house the poor who are cast out when you see the naked that you cover him and not hide yourself from your own flesh and blood? God is saying the same thing to us today. I'm not interested in your festivals. I'm not interested in your annual days. I'm not interested in your religious conventions and your dated feasts. If you want to heal from heaven, if you want your land to be healed, if you want your fast to be meaningful and want me to answer your prayers, then do away with the yoke of oppression, with the pointing finger and malicious talk. And if you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, if you get rid of your hatred, if you get rid of your racism, if you get rid of your unjust inequalities, if you extend justice to the poor and the oppressed, if you stop exploiting laborers of their wages, if you stop the greed among you, if you stop killing the innocent and letting go the guilty, if you do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with God, then call on me and I will answer you. And when you call for help, then I will say, here I am. If we do these things, my brothers and sisters, as the Lord requires, then I like shall dawn in the darkness. Then our darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide us continually and satisfy our souls in droughts and strengthen our bones. You shall be like water gardens, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Those among you shall build the old waste places. You shall rise up uh, the foundation of many generations, and you shall be the repairer of the breach, the restorer of speech to dwell in. In other words, there'll be a renovation going on in your community. In other words, you'll be able to raise up the dilapidated places, but we're gonna have to do as the Lord requires. Not church, when we get our hearts right, 
when the American church stops participating in oppressing the poor, stop crushing the weak and the vulnerable, stops exploiting workers of their wages, and stop running over the oppressed with evil and injustice, then we will hear from God. Then our worship will be accepted. Then we will be called the repairer of the breach. You see, God moves on our behalf when he sees we have contrite hearts. David said something that we need to say and mean today from the White House down to our houses. David said, create within me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit. And when our hearts are clean by the washing of his word, then our light will shine in the darkness and our darkness shall be as the noonday. The Lord will guide us continually and satisfy our souls in a drought and he will strengthen our bones. Then we'll be able to build the old waste places and then uh, rise, uh, raise up the foundation of many generations and we shall be called the repairer of the breach. This is what we need in our nation. This is what we need in our communities. This is what we need in our churches. We need repairers of the breach. Repairers of the breach. This is my hope that when this pandemic is over, we are ready to be called the repairers of the breach. We are ready to be called the repairers of the breach. Whatever it takes, we are ready to be called the repairers of the breach. God is looking in these times, even during this pandemic, and when it is over, God is looking not for religious people, not for just praying people, not for people who just going through a religious motion. God is looking for repairers of the breach from the White House to our houses. And when we do this, then and only then we'll call on God and he will answer. And when we pray to him, he will come and he will be our God and we will be his people. And I'm praying First Baptist and all of you who are listening to me today that we will be called the repairers of the breach. May God bless you and may God keep you.